Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today's session, uh, we're going to talk on the current affairs of agriculture and rural development. I've chosen this topic on Pradhan Mantri Kushi Sijayi Yojana, okay? And this is a very important topic, an important scheme from the exam point of view, high chances of this uh, top, uh, this topic coming in the exam as well. So we're going to talk a bit in detail about this uh, scheme, right? Right from its launching date, what the objectives, uh, what are the implementations, its components, right? And there's also a little bit of update about this uh, Yojna. So we're going to talk about that as well. So guys, please do watch this video till the end, right? And if you have a notepad right now, you can just try to uh, keep a notepad beside you and you can jot it down as we as I'm going to explain further, right? So, uh, my name is Hansa Nora Sarma and I've been your mentor for Nabar exam. I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my uh, master's in agriculture and nematology, right? So, before going further, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, right? And you can also press the bell, bell icon for further notifications from our amazing content, right? And uh, do share with your friends whoever is giving the exam. Alright, so now let's move on to the first slide. Before going further, we need to understand the basics of water in the agriculture section, right? So the first thing first, we are uh, actually about 80% of the current water is drawn by the agriculture. It means that out of 100% that we use, the 20% goes to other things. But 80% of the current water which is available to us is, is drawn by agriculture, okay? So uh, there are some facts given here. So this is very important for the example of you guys, okay? So not only under this, so the total agriculture land in India is about 140 million hectares, right? Remember that, 140 million hectares. And out of that, say about 48.8% is irrigated. And rain fed is about only 51.2 percent. So majority of the uh, the majority of the land it is covered under the rain fed. If you're going to ask what a rain fed is, a rain fed is where there is no irrigation facilities. People they give water to the crops by through rainfall only. So, so they are fully dependent on rainfall for water for irrigating their crops. Okay, so that is what a rain fed is. Okay. So we have about 51.2%, so that is more than half. It is more than the irrigated land. So half of India's land, irrigated area, uh, sorry, uh, half of India's um, agricultural land, it is rain fed, right, and irrigated. And half, say about 48% is irrigated, okay? Now let's move on to the comparison okay if you go down here you're gonna talk more about the comparison so the the mean productivity of the rain fed area right the rain fed area is about 71.62 million hectares okay and the productivity that we get is about 1.1 ton per hectare so guys don't uh, confuse this with a uh, production okay so basically production is the produce that you get from the farm right on season or the particular season or annually okay but then this productivity we're going to talk about productivity productivity is the average yield of okay, per unit input so this input can be in terms of money in terms of plan or time right so in simpler term in agriculture terms we use this productivity as an average yield per unit area so here it is uh, we are going to uh, cover it in, in terms of per unit hectare per hectare right so the average yield per hectare that you get so the average yield that you get from the rainfed area is 1.1 tons per hectare okay but again if you look down here the mean productivity of irrigated area all right the area is about 71.62 right so this will be about 2.8 tons per hectare so from the same area you get the double the productivity right so this clearly suggests that irrigation uh giving having an irrigation facilities will definitely increase the production and in turn it will definitely increase the productivity and therefore it will increase the farmer's income as well so this is the main thing that you guys need to remember okay right so but in india there has been substantial dependency on this rainfall for the irrigation right and this 
dependency on this rainfall it has given a very higher risk and they have a le less productivity for the farmers as well so in a way that this predominantly appreciation jai yoga was come about it was done to ensure the means to provide a basic means of protective irrigation to all the agriculture farms from all corners of the country right and they also so that they will also increase the productivity they will also be helping in water conservation right as well as they will have a more desirable possibility so this is one of the reasons why the predominant recruitment sanjay use now came about okay and now let's move on to another slide so the, what is the main purpose of this PMKS one, okay. So now uh, it is the national mission, okay. Remember, it's a national mission to improve the farm productivity. So we've already uh, we have already talked about this farm productivity, right? So as irrigation increases productivity, so if you have ample, if you have enough water for your plants when needed at the time or uh, when it's needed the most at its critical period when you have the availability or the sources of water for your crops then definitely your crops will flourish and it will fruit well and the production will be higher and therefore the productivity will also increase right and it will also ensure better utilization of the resources in the country right so all the resources that we have in the country most of it, it goes into waste right so through this adopting of new technologies new methods new water efficient methods new friendly methods then we'll be able to utilize these resources properly in a more efficient way so that there is no wastage right and it will help it will be beneficial in all the uh, ways and will be more holistic right so this are some of the things the main purpose of this predominantly kushi sanchali yojana okay so uh, if we're going to talk about this new methods new technologies then uh, the best for irrigation would be drip irrigation as well as sprinkler irrigation okay so these are uh, the new technologies which give you the more precise form of giving water to your plants right drop by drop and no wastage of water okay so that is the best utilization of the resources that you can get and minimum wastage of water and very efficient okay so uh, another one here is that this uh, pmksy it is also a century sponsored scheme this is very self this is self-explanatory okay and this it is uh launched in the year of 2015 this is very very important from the exam point of view right so any question can also come like when was this pmksy launched right so your answer should be in 2015 is actually to be more precise it's on 1st july 2015 okay so remember that so another one here is that this their implementation is shared by the central as well as the state government okay we're going to, when we're going to talk about the other uh, normal states right the bigger states then uh, the share is about 75 to 25% okay guys right so it means that 75% will be sponsored by this central government and the state government will be given by the 25% okay but this is different in terms of the hilly regions as well as in the northeastern regions the northeastern regions of the hilly states right like Himachal or Uttarakhand and all of that it will be around 90% will be sponsored by the central and 10% by the state okay so remember these two uh, ratios this is very important it can also come in the exam you can also ask right in terms maybe in terms of uh, statement or you can they can also ask you in a direct question it can also come from here so it's very important to jot down and to know the differences okay so uh, let's move on. So this PMKSY it is actually combined or it is a union of different schemes, okay? The first one here is it is a union of an accelerated irrigation benefit program. So this accelerated irrigation benefit program scheme, it is also uh, under the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation, which is known, now known as Ministry of Jal Shakti, right? And it is also... Um, uh, 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 integrated water management practices of department uh, of land resources is also quite 
to form this PM case, case one. And this Department of Land Resources, it is under the Ministry of Rural Development, okay? The last one here is on the on-farm water management, okay? And this on-farm water management, it is a component of National Mission of Sustainable Agriculture, okay? And this national mission is in turn under the Department of Agriculture and Cooperation. And this department, it is under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. So remember, these three things that you guys need to remember. It is Accelerated Irrigation Benefit Program, Integrated Watershed Management Program, On-Farm Water Management. So these three things, uh, national, which is a component of this National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture. So... It also gives you the idea that this PMK is uh, under three ministries, right? Ministry of Jal Shakti, Ministry of Rural Development, and Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. Remember this three points as well, okay? And now let's move on to the objectives of the scheme. So it is whenever you read a scheme, anything about a scheme, it is very important to know, have a very basic concept about its objectives, okay? So there are actually a lot of objectives under this PMKS5, but then I have summarized it into just uh, five of it, okay? So the first one is to attract the investment in the irrigation system at the field level. So when we're gonna talk about the field level, all the, uh, they should have have these convergence of all these investments at the uh, say about state level or even under that maybe at a district level or you can also go under sub-district level water plan water use plans should be already laid out okay and that way so that uh, whatever is coming through whatever investment is coming through from the government from the central right then as we go down to the ground level, to the field level, it'll be well implemented everywhere. So it ha there has to be a proper water use plans, right? Done at the district level or even at the sub-district level as well, okay? So now the second one is here is about Harkate Kopani. So Harkate Kopani, as the line suggests, it will develop and it will expand the cultivable land, right? On the irrigation, when there is an irrigation facilities and areas, right then definitely we will be able to expand the areas of cultivation right and in that way it will help in uh, producing more crops so the main thing about this i think called Harkit Kopani is that it will have uh, they will be expanding this uh, irrigation facilities should re reach all the corners of the country any farmer shouldn't be left out or any land any cultivable land or fields of a farmer should all have irrigation facilities all right so that is the main thing about it hurricane kopani another one third one here if you look is on the enhanced ranch water use in order to minimize the wastage of water this is also a self-explanatory i guess so what happens is that we'll be using all more of the efficient methods of water conservation right and we'll all be using a method of water irrigation system so there will be having a minimum wastage of this water a lot of times we go for broadcasting of this water we just go for over flow uh, irrigation of this water where there is huge loss of the water where it just the water just runs off and then it goes into waste so to prevent those they will be uh, taking up uh, more of the water uh, more of the water efficient methods right another one here is enhanced crop per drop by implementing water saving technologies and precision irrigation so when we're talking about this, where it's more about the micro irrigation, it's more crop per drop. Okay, so um, getting more production, more productivity through a more precise, lesser water. So uh, since the water uh, saving technologies or the new technology, for example, like uh, drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation, right? So through that, what happens is that we'll be using the precise drop by drop water. So as you all know in drip irrigation, right, a pipe is there, a small hole is there on the drip which is near the root zone of the plant. So what happens is that as you, uh, the hole is so small that the water comes in a drop by drop per second, okay. So 
and it'll be the water will be only confined to the root zone which is necessary only for the growth of the plant so it won't be uh, it won't be going away to the other parts of the soil where it doesn't need the water so since it will be uh, dropping on the root zone of the of the plant so the water is being more efficient right it is uh, being given on that area that sets area where the water is most needed by the plants so in that way this plant will be able to get more of the water that they get right and that way it is more efficient okay and the thing here the last one is that the take a tag line for this pmks by is more crop per drop so the try to remember this you also have this thing on hurricane kopani right so these two are the more of the two tag lines of this pmks by okay so try to remember uh and other objectives can also be on like achieving uh the, we will also enhance the physical access of the water on the farm, which we've already talked about, right? So we will also integrate um, more of like the water resources distribution and more of an efficient use way. And we will also improve the farm water use efficiency, right? So it will, so that it will also increase in the availability and both in duration as well as in the extent as well, okay? So we'll also be going more of like the uh, Another objective, main objective, which I haven't uh, described here, is to promote and extension activities, okay, which are, which are mostly related to water harvesting technologies, water harvesting methods, water management, and crop alignment for the farmers, right? So the extension program is also a very important objective under this PMPSY, okay? So these are some of the uh, objectives that you guys need to remember. There are a lot of objectives read once all of those objectives right and you can come up with a summary of your own right so take out the important points which you cannot miss okay so uh, this is something on the objectives of the scheme and now let's go on the components okay so this pmksy it has four components okay guys four components the first one is accelerated irrigation benefit program okay which is also known as aibp and the second one here is hurricane kopani okay now the one is PMKSY per job more crop and the last one here is watershed development, right? So now let us look into all of these components uh, more in detail. So this accelerated irrigation benefit program, it mostly focuses on the projects that is ongoing currently, okay? It can be national or the major or very small medium uh, projects. So this focuses on faster completion, okay? to make these projects complete faster. So this accelerated irrigation benefit program, it focuses on the completion, okay? So that it'll finish or it'll complete the project faster. Another one here is PMKSY, Hurricane Kopani, that is uh, moving to focus on the new water resources through minor irrigation. So it can be on the, first, uh, on the basis of surface ground, surface water, right like the tubules or all of that so it can be on the basis of groundwater irrigation as well so these the main aim to create new water sources where there is no water sources or there is no or where the area is rain fed completely to expand the irrigation facilities that means right so that it can also be done by through various methods to uh, through water storage methods to um, storing of these uh, water harvesting methods as well right so we can harvest this methods when water harvesting right and uh, the another one here is that it can also repair we can also restore and renovate all these water bodies right and it, uh, it can also help in the strengthening of the capacity of the traditional water sources right they will also help in constructing this rain water harvesting structures and this is known as gel sanche okay so remember guys under this Hurricane Kopani, we have Jal Sanche, which means repair, restoring, renovating of all these water bodies, right? And when water harvesting, all of these come under this Jal Sanche, right? Another one here is that it's on the area, uh, command area development, right? And it will help in strengthening and creation of distribution network from source to the farmer. So this command area is basically just an area which is near the, uh, which is near the project or a dam okay and this area it gets the most benefits from it 
through in form of uh, irrigation or in form of electricity, right? So another form of this area is benefited. So, and this is an area which can be used for irrigation from a scheme. And this area is actually also fit for cultivation. So this is command area. And now we're going to talk about this command area development. So it's just a development about this area so that the better utilization of the area can be increased. Command area development program or the plan that was basically done to narrow the gap between the irrigation potential which was being created and the one which has actually been implemented or utilized in the major and the medium irrigation schemes. So this was the main aim of this command. So that is another topic, right? So all you need to know is that it also helped this through this, it will also help the command area development of the area. The <coughs> development, okay? I hope this is clear and now uh, let's move on to this per drop more crop, okay? So the main focus is on the water use efficiency through sprinkler and drip irrigation. So we'll be using more of the water efficient methods, right? So that we'll be using lesser water, but it will give more production and more productivity and the plants or the crops will get the maximum benefit from it, okay? So that's the main focus. The second one that you guys need to remember is that they will be having a more they will be promoting efficient water conveyance and also precision water application, right? So the devices like drips, sprinklers, pivots, rain guns, and the farm, these are all used. And this is known as gel sinchan, okay? So try to remember. Another last one here is extension activities, right? So extension activities for promoting the scientific moisture conservation and the agronomic measures. And um, these are known as gel syrup channel okay so if you're uh you, you will be using less of water right so it'll be more efficient and it will also improve the value of drop precision drop value they improve the value of drop okay so it means that it'll be more precise so the water whatever water is given to the planet is more precise so there won't be any wastage of water and we also have this availability of the soil to absorb the moisture right so these are some of the things that Points that you guys it's very important for you all to remember and, and last one here is in a watershed development so uh the effective the first point that you guys need to remember on this is the effective management of the runoff water so what are runoff water runoff water is a water uh when the when the wind when, when there's a rainfall then a lot of water is run off right because there is no vegetation or there is no proper water storage okay so in this the water is usually uh the run of water is a water which goes into waste, which just goes into the river directly without using the water which has been fallen on the soil or on the ground, right? So these are mainly on the, uh, say, rain, rain water, which cannot be stored and which goes directly and uh, into wastage. So the main thing is that effective management. So we need to manage all those water which has been falling through the rainfall, storing it, all the water, conserv water conservation methods, right? And it can be also done to, by improving the soil and moisture conservation. So we can also make work for contour bundling, gully, right? All those rainwater harvesting treatments. We can go for the drainage proper drainage line area so that none of the water goes into waste All right so these are some of the management practices or management that we need to focus on the conservation of this water right so another point that you guys need to remember is when we converge or when we come in union with this m and gas for the creation of water source okay so They'll be helping along with the MN regulars, it will also help in creating the water source or the water body to full potential, right? So in that way, all these water bodies or the water source can be used directly from the source to the farm, right? And it can also identify the backward rain-fed blocks, right? So they can also go on for renovating uh, the traditional water bodies, right? They can also go more further for this rainwater, traditional rainwater water storage bodies, right? So for example, in some of the states, we already have the traditional water water storing uh, bodies, right? Or like the water storage systems, such as in like Nagaland, it's Zabo. We also have Dongs, which is in Assam. Okay, we have uh, uh, Bandas in Orissa, and we have Iri, right, in Tamil Nadu. And in that way, we have other local traditional water storage systems, right? So we'll 
open renovating and creating and rejuvenating all these water storage facilities and storage systems through this okay so these are some of the things on this watershed management right and now let's move on to the implementation so this is a very important point guys so uh when is it implemented so for the implementation there was an outlay the government gave an outlay of about 50,000 crores. So this is very important, okay? And it was given for the period of five years. So from the year of when it was implemented, which was on 2015 to 2016, till the year of 19, 2019 to 20, the government has given, has, uh, given an outlay of about 50,000 crores, okay? For a period of five years. So remember guys, this PMK is why it is aims at decentralized state level planning and executing structure so it means that a state which doesn't have an access to this uh, district irrigation plan would it, where they do not have a proper water use plan systems right through this district irrigation plan dip or a state irrigation plan sip then the all the states should have this because the implementation is going to be done at the ground level at the state level right so the, what, the, the money will come, the investment will come from the central government, but eventually the, the implementation has to be done on the ground level. So they should have a proper district irrigation plan and a state irrigation plan so that uh, a state will only be eligible for this fund if they have these two plans, okay, which is DIP as well as SIP, okay. So this is very important and one thing guys uh, on the first year of this when it was launched for the year of say about 2015 to 2016 the outlay of about 5200 rupees crore was given for that year okay so remember that as well so uh, there might be a question on this as well so try to keep that in mind as well okay and another one here is that now let us just talk on the question let's try to solve the question okay so since we've already talked about the outlays right so what is the total outlay allocated for this pmksy under the per drop more crop okay by the government for the year of 2020-21 so the options given here are guys a is rupees 4500 crores b is 4000 crores c is 5000 crores number d is 3,500 crores and number E, 6,000 crores. So the right answer is 4,000 crores, okay? So 4,000 crores, the government of India has allocated about 4,000 crores under the per job more crop components of this PMKSY for the year of 2020 to 21, right? So this is a very important topic. This can come in the exam. So try to note it, note it down and always remember about this, okay? So remember, this is also under the component of the per job more crop, PDMC, right? So further, this micro irrigation fund, right? The scope is of about rupees 5,000 crore. It has also been created within the bar. So what is, why they have created to implement the special innovative projects under whatever is going on? In the country okay so there has been a, a release the funds has been released for two states which is for Andhra Pradesh and for uh, Tamil Nadu for Andhra Pradesh is around 616 crores and for Tamil Nadu it's around 4,000 uh, sorry 478 crores okay right so these are these are all done through Navart right so uh, one thing that the area um, covered under this project this is not that important but try to remember because these are the first two stages right so uh the area can covered under the project right for this uh in andhra pradesh is around one lakh hectare okay and for on tamil nadu is a bit more higher which is about 1.7 lakh hectare so try to remember just one and one is to one seven okay so now let us talk about some of the progress under this pmksy okay so um this PMKSY, it is another packet maybe we have given the area or the coverage of this area. Okay, so another one here is the uh, micro irrigation. So this under this micro irrigation, we have drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. So in India, drip irrigation it has completed about 6.2. And for sprinkler, it is about 5.48. So in a total, it makes about 11.7 lakh hectare in the whole of 
country, okay? And we also have this potential potential creative for protective irrigation. So under protective irrigation, we have covered about 0.97 like hectares. Okay, so these are the, some of the points that you need to remember. And we uh, and in this table, I've just roughly uh, given on the uh, output incomes and the financial outlay for this uh, EMKSYPD uh, MC, okay, which is for drop more crop, right? So outlay of, of 4,000 was given, right? Cool. So the input here, we can see is that the input has been given, the, sorry, the output will be in the uh, efficient water conveyance on all the precision irrigation technologies right can be on all the devices the output will be for all the devices and they also have an extension coverage of this macro irrigation under the sugarcane or any other uh, food crops also okay so so how can we indicate all this? so let me just talk go in detail like this okay so how can we indicate all this and can we indicate it through an area okay so once we know that uh, we have covered this much area then we'll be able to this will be the indicators okay right so and the target for this year was about 16 lakh hectare okay so 16 lakh hectares are targeted for this year for for the area remember and something that the number of farmers is also an indicator how much number can they outreach how, how much number can they grab and how much outreach can they get right through this so it's around six lakhs six lakhs farmers are targeted for this year right so and the outcome would be there will be increase in productivity of course and when there's an increase in the area under micro irrigation there will be having higher production and therefore higher productivity and therefore higher if farm income right so and this indicator how will we indicate through the high yield okay and the yield target is about 20 percent okay and we also have some things on the enhancement of farm income levels we use the and micro irrigation by 15 percent these are not that important so uh, i'll tell you what are important the area which are covered under the micro irrigation the target of that the production um, right in the cultivated area right the targets for that okay and so I think these are the ones that is very more important, okay? And also the area under the protective irrigation. So what is the target of area under the protective irrigation? It's about 50,000 hectares, right? The 50,000 hectares is the targeted area, okay? So and these are some of the uh, things that we need to know the targets um, for this year, right? So and how can we indicate uh, how many farmers are uh, targeted? Six lakh farmers targeted, how many? how much area so in this we try to study okay and uh, these are the important points that you guys need to remember for this um, scheme okay and well that's all for today and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications for my channel and if you've liked the video don't forget to click the thumbs up button and please guys if you guys have any doubts or any queries don't forget to drop it in the comment section so that i will be able to know and we'll be able to uh, answer your queries and your questions and all your doubts right and feel free don't feel uh, hesitant to reach us out as well right and so we'll be meeting for the next session thank you